Uh, any tips on avoiding cheesy dialogue, or should I embrace the cheese? Uh, sometimes embracing the cheese can be wonderful. Um, I write a lot of cheesy characters. Uh, you either need... To... It really depends. Um, I think embracing the cheese is a good idea. Because I think it would make you have like interesting dialogue if you lean into it. Uh, for me, dialogue is usually connected to voice uh, and finding like the voice of a character. Um, you really have to have like a strong sense of them. I find uh, sometimes I'm just trying to give different advice than I usually do because usually I'm like study people talking and then th you got to have a uh, intention behind your dialogue. But, you know, I've said that a million times. Uh, so let's do some other tips. <laughs> um, and I forgot the tip. Wow. Oh, I know. Uh, sometimes I, when I'm having a lot of trouble with a character and getting their dialogue, uh, because I'm like into prose writing i'll sit down and do some like prose from their perspective um and i like describe the room like this is like a classic writing exercise and it's really good if you guys want to get into writing prose because it is like camp nano time right now and i know some of you ask about prose but um yeah you sit and you describe a room as the character and like everyone will look at a room kind of differently and like what details they focus on really like informs a character like the classic example is like do they see a glass half full or half empty or do they see the glass and they're like when was the last time that was cleaned and or um uh or are they bones mckay and do they look at the water and think i wonder what the ph level of that is uh how, what's the hardness scale how many how many grams um what is it uh parts per million of of like calcium is in that you know like you describe it from the, their pov and I find that helps me kind of get into the character's head a bit more, especially for characters that don't have a very unique way of talking. Because it's easy to write characters who have, like, an accent, I guess. Not even, like, an accent, but, you know, like, they talk in a certain way. Maybe they're an uwu type. Um, or maybe they are an owo type. Or maybe they're a pirate i go with that one a lot um like those are easy to like differentiate but for those more subtle characters like it's good to just sit in their brain for a bit and just see how they think and a lot of the time that can end up informing like how they talk because you start noticing things in the dialogue where you're like would that character actually say that or is that something i say you're an owo you're you're one hundred percent OOPK. Like at least whenever you show up on the on the uh voice chat, it's like oh whoa. Like I'm imagining like a car. It's a car meme and there's like the gas pedal and it says oh whoa. And that's you when you enter the chat. <laughs> <laughs> and then we do Charlie's and it go it's like the gas pedal is down on Baca. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I thought you were going to say what, what, pip, pip. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> well, yeah, Charlie's dialogue's easy because we just write it in an accent. There we go. Perfect. Exactly. 10 out of 10. Not offensive at all. <laughs> what, what? What, what? <laughs> They're English. You can't. They're, I guess you can fine. make fun of the English. <laughs> that's fine. Always make fun of the English. Please do. Uh, what I wonder is who the frick did come up with the glass half full or empty? I think a normal response is just to notice the glass content 
if it's over spilling or is completely empty. See there, that's a character moment right oh, there. That says something about a character. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did that exercise once where I took all of my characters and I described uh, a glass that was half empty. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and you just, you try to make it unique to each character. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I recommend y'all try it. Um, it's good prose. Because, like, that's how you write really good prose. Um, is describing things. Wow. wow. Um, there are tons of words in every language. Really cool. Wow. And <laughs> Didn't know that. Unless it's new speak, then there's not many words. Um, that's <laughs> the point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um... <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but yeah, there's so many words to describe things, and you need to look at things and describe them with different words, depending on whose POV you're in. And it sounds like so simple, but it's not. <laughs> it's hard. Because you want to say a brown table, but always double think yourself. Wait, is Double Think Newspeak? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> I love George Orwell's Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that meme and I'm <laughs> dying. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's tons of words in every language. PhD Bones McKay. <laughs> McKay Bones. <laughs> um. I have too many OCs to come up with a unique glass thingy for them all. Just yeah, you just do a few if you're into like um writing prose. It's really good. Um one of like the exercises I did in a short story class with I think it was like the Mary short Mary short story class is you describe your room as yourself. So first like sit down and describe like the room, descri describe the five senses if you can get that. Um, and then do it again. Pick an occupation, like firefighter. That's it. That's the only occupation. Um, professional, professional bowler, <laughs> dog trainer monster hunter uh like just pick a profession or whatever and describe the room again and without saying anything about the character get it across get their profession across yeah yep. and like describe des describe something in a way that makes someone realize that the person describing it is a doctor without ever saying that a doctor is the one that's talking. Um, hi guys. I'm not sure if I can make it to the... What? What is this? <laughs> oh. It is jobless. And is broke for a living? Exactly. See, I feel like if you use that as an example of like what a doctor would write. Yeah. You could also say, because office could also be a teacher. Could also be if you work in an office, like a manager. Yeah. Wait, what were you saying? Is Don Burke doing? I don't know what Don like Burke writing is. as a doctor or something. I don't know I what Don Burke is doing. I assume that's what they. Yes, were they're writing like a doctor. Okay. Laughs in ego, <laughs> electromagnetic. Insert thing for sci-fi jargon speak. <laughs> quantum. Quantum, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, like you can. It's one of the coolest things about writing prose. Like, I think it's pretty lit when you can get information across in, like, a seamless way. I'm really bad at it in comics. Um, 
because it's visual, but ugh, it's just so fun. I love it so much. I love describing things. <laughs> Except in therapy, when the, when the therapist says, describe your emotions. And I'm like, I've never thought about this question. I just think about other people's emotions all the time. And, and then I'm like, do you actually smile when you're happy? Is that like a thing? I just, or is this like a thing that I've always written as a shorthand? It all, it's all falling apart, guys. Is he okay? How do you write two characters bonding? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a question. There's a kitty. What's the other question? Look at her. Um, you mean like the contents of your urge show to me a particular style of manner in which... <laughs> God. Okay. Like that. <laughs> but not. Hi, please know me. I'll know you. Okay. Um, I have no idea what I'm saying. I'm just trying to make it sound smart by saying <laughs> something dumb. The table was short, just like my patience. 